Newsflash, Pokemon regions are based on real locations. Alola is Hawaii, Kalos is France, and heck, Kanto didn't even change the name, it's based on the Kanto region of Japan. But, of course, it goes deeper. Landscapes, landmarks, cities, and even the number of bridges along certain routes, sometimes, are based on real-world locations. And in this video, we're going to go over these locations in the Sinnoh region, which is based on Hokkaido, Japan's northernmost prefecture, as well as a little bit of Sakhalin, Russia. But just the southern tip of it, see? This is the Sinnoh region explained, a deep dive. Disclaimer! I'm gonna try my best, but I am going to mispronounce some things. I'm whiter than the snow across Okaido. Now, let's start with Twinleaf Town, the starter town, named such because it's the starting point, and little sprouts pop out of the ground with two little leaves. The Japanese name of this town does translate to sprout, after all, and if you look at the roads in the town, they're actually making the Japanese kanji for soil, bountiful earth that seedlings pop out of. It's most likely based on Noboribetsu, a small snowy town in the Shikotsutoya National Park, and it's just beside the Caldera Lake Toya, which is what Lake Verity is based on. Oh, and a caldera lake is basically a crater lake formed by a volcano, often with a hill of sorts in the middle, which makes an island when the crater eventually fills up and forms a lake. Verity means truth, which may relate to the legendary emotion Pokemon Mesprit, who resides here. The truth hurts your feelings. To the east now, we reach Sand Gem Town, the town of sand. Wow, what a name and what a motto. It has the Pokemon Lab and a sandy beach. It's based on the real-world Tomakomai, a highly industrial, mid-sized port town. So there's sand, all right. Sand gems, you could even say, as this city manufactures glass, slag, and concrete aggregates, exporting them all over Japan. To the southeast, we eventually reach Pal Park, which looks exactly like the Pal Park in Kanto, and that's no coincidence. Both of these are fully artificial, and the guy who runs this Pal Park is the son of the guy who runs Kanto's. But considering it's on the edge of mountains and has what looks like a lake, and given its location on Sinnoh's map, the best analog I can see would be Takami, a mostly man-made lake on the edge of a mountain range. The dam there makes the lake be a lake instead of a river, and it generates power for Hokkaido. And it's got a campground park all around it, mm hmm, so maybe. Uh, but next we move to the north of Sand Gem, to Jubilife City, the biggest and most modern modern city in Sinnoh, and it is similarly based on Hokkaido's biggest city, Sapporo. This was actually the first city in all of Asia to host the Winter Olympics, which may be referenced by the city's slogan in Pokemon, the town of happiness where people gather. People from all over the world gather for the Olympics, after all, or perhaps that's just a reference to the global terminal being located here, as well as a major contest hall, in the anime anyway. But all that could also just be because it's a big city, which might also be the only reason why the Poketech company is here too. But Sapporo does have plenty to do with the computer and information industries, more than any other city in Hokkaido anyway. There's also the Jubilife TV building and the trainer's school, easy references to Sapporo's TV tower and this being the city with Hokkaido University. Jubilife's lore states that the flat land it's built on top of was carved out from a mountain by the residents of Orberg City, which is next to it. Notably, Sapporo was only able to grow so big because of a large expanse of flat plains, which is incredibly rare in Japan, Hokkaido especially, being as mountainy as it is. The name Jubilife is literally jubilant life, jubilant meaning a feeling of great happiness or triumph. The people here are happy and proud of their big city. Moving east through a mountain range, we get to Orberg, based on Yubari, which these days is a tiny town with under 10,000 people, but in its prime it had over 120,000. It was a mining town, coal and iron for days, and similarly, Orberg kinda has everything to do with that. It has a mine, a mining museum, just like the u Buddy Coal Mining Museum. It's where the rock-type gym leader is, and it's where you revive fossils, which are rocks. The name is simple too, or, you know, the metal in rocks, and Berg is one of many names for a city or town, and is likely here to reference Pittsburgh, famous for its own steel mills and old abandoned mines. North of Orberg, Route 206, we have Cycling Road, it being red bordered and crossing a river leads me to believe that if it's based on any real bridge or raised road, it'd be Silver Bridge. It crosses Yubari River and goes over a park while being narrow and having this red section. And along this path are many other red foot or bike bridges too. Or perhaps 
perhaps, if being between Yubari and Asahikawa, which is Eterna City, which is at the other end of Cycling Road, uh, we'll get to Eterna, but if being between those isn't as important as it being along the western edge of Mount Coronet, it could be any of the many land bridges across Daisetsuzan National Park, the Mount Coronet mountain range essentially. They too tend to have red support beams and are often popular with bicyclists. Wayward Cave is also found along this route and is likely a reference to the many caves found all across Daisetsuzen National Park. Or, or, if its location isn't important, the Akeshi Bridge is famous in Hokkaido for its bright red coloration, and it has the right number of street lanes and bike lanes. It's just way the heck over here instead of being in the right spot. But like, if Galar is anything to go off of, then the specific locations of things isn't super important. Anyway, let's go back down to Jubalife City, or rather west of it. We cross a major river, likely based on either Ishikari River, just on the other side of Sapporo, or the properly located but much smaller Asari River. And upon crossing it, you enter Kanalev City, a major cargo port with a huge canal right through it, which is where it gets its name, Canal Lave. To lave is to wash in a river or the sea. The ocean waves laved the ship. It's based on Otaru or the neighboring Yoichi, which similarly each have a large canal going right through them, and they export a lot of the iron that's mined out east. That, along with all of the metal boats, makes Kenalave having the steel-type gym fitting enough. Kenalave also has a noteworthy library, and similarly, the Otaru University Library of Commerce is the city's academic heart and the largest library in Hokkaido. And from Kenalave, you can take a ferry to a number of islands. Iron Island is an ore mining island based on Yagishiri Island, a part of the town Haboro, which did indeed once have ore mines. Full Moon Island is based on Reibun Island, and New Moon Island, Rishidi Island. Both of these are right next to each other, both in-game and in Hokkaido. And properly, New Moon Island is much taller, more mountainous, just like Rishidi. And Reibun even has this crescent moon shape on its northern shore. And now we head north of Jubilife, er, er Sapporo, up in elevation and past three lakes, just like the cliffs and three ponds in Route 204. And we enter Floroma Town, vivid and scented is its motto, and it's got like a septillion flowers. Oh gosh, and its name just combines flower and aroma. Well, it's based on either Bai or Fuano City, both small towns that are pretty close to one another and are both famous for their huge fields of flowers, a lot of lavender. I'm leaning a bit more towards Fuano, as it has this archway in it, which is similar to the entryway in Floroma Town. To the east of Floroma Town, you'll find a power plant, the Valley Windworks, which is very likely inspired by Tomamae, a tiny town famous for its windmills dotting the countryside. They famously also hold a kite competition and festival at the end of every February, which could be a reference to this being where you find Drifloon only on Fridays. North of Floroma Town is the Fuego Ironworks. Fuego is just the Spanish word for fire, and this is a metal foundry, which are dotted all across Hokkaido. Being such a mountainous region, there's lots of mining and metalworking, so they had to reference that somewhere. And considering that this is probably where all of the metal that winds up exported in Kanalev City is from, this river here is probably inspired by the Ishikari River again, just much further inland. Continuing on the path through Eterna Forest, which by the way, Hokkaido just has so many forests everywhere, it's basically a mountain forest, so like, generic forest here, we reach Eterna City, which was supposed to be eternal, but they ran out of room on the sign. It's based on Asahikawa, the second largest city in Hokkaido. It mainly exports lumber, which is fitting, being so close to Eterna Forest, and also being where the grass-type gym is. And just like Eterna City, Asahikawa is surrounded by old forests and national parks. Eterna City's motto, History Living, or the town that ties the past to now in Japanese, likely has to do with the ancient statue of Palkia and or Dialga that's found here. And similarly, Asahikawa has many Ainu statues, museums, and schools dedicated to preserving all we can about Hokkaido's indigenous people, the Ainu, tying the past to now. In fact, Kamikawa, the subprefecture Asahikawa is in, was considered a specially sacred land by the Ainu, as it's the place closest to the world of the spirits. In Western alchemy, this is known as the Archeus. <clears throat> and lastly, Eterna City is where you'll find Team Galactic's headquarters. Asahikawa doesn't have any particular crime problem, even with the Yakuza, but it does have a noteworthy observatory and planetarium, which may relate to Team Galactic studying the Pokémon of time and space. Back in the forest now, though, there's the old chateau, an abandoned haunted mansion. There are abandoned buildings all over Hokkaido. As mentioned, some cities are now 10% of the population that they were 50 years ago. Plus, haunted houses and ghost stories are a common thing all across Japan, and as far as 
far as I can tell, this isn't referencing any particular one found around this area. It's a generic haunted mansion. Now we travel east through Route 211, which goes through Mount Coronet's mountain range. We pass over a large gorge, likely inspired by Hokkaido's famous Songkyo Gorge, which similarly goes right through the mountain range on the north side. And now we reach the Celestial Celestic Town, based on Kitami, which, fun fact, at one point produced 70% of the world's mint. Also fun fact, in the western language of flowers, mint symbolizes virtue, and in the east, mint symbolizes happy hospitality and wisdom. In the middle of Celestic Town, we see a shrine in a crater by some ruins dedicated to the legendary Pokemon of Sinnoh. While not underground, Kitami does have its share of ancient ruins, primarily pit dwellings, dug out craters that people built their homes in. And of course, there are many, many shrines, and I really like how the buildings in this town especially resemble Ainu architecture. And now we head all the way up north, we reach Snow Point City. Always snowy because of how north it is. It's on the very point of Sinnoh 2, hence the name, and hence it being perfect for the ice-type gym. And the clearing in the forest that it's situated in is shaped like a snowflake. It's likely based on Wakanai, one of the northernmost cities in Japan. And from it, you can see Russia. This is also one of Japan's coldest areas, and it is the windiest area, which is reflected by the blizzards that occur along Route 217, which leads into this city. Also, just below that is Route 216, featuring three bridges and another gorge or valley, as well as the snowbound lodge just after them. This lines up with the three adjacent bridges along the highway leading up to Wakanai in Hokkaido, with a ski resort and lodge right after them. Now, like the Snowpoint Temple ruins, Wakanai has its share of ruins too, though they are more so related to World War II rather than being ancient. And like most Japanese cities, there are also Shinto shrines all over the place, though one particular shrine, Hokuman Jinja, is notable as it's dedicated not to one, but three gods, Amaterasu, Kotoshiro Noishi, and Takemikazuchi, which could reference how you need the Reggie trio to enter Snowpoint Temple, but none of these gods particularly relate to those Reggies, so who knows. But just to the west of Snowpoint, there's Lake Akuity based on either Lake Onuma, which is properly right next to Wakanai, or Lake Kucharo, which is still nearby, but is also a caldera with an island in the middle. Nothing wrong with combining elements of both. It's home to Uxi, the lake guardian of knowledge, fitting as acuity means sharp or keenness of thought. Now, back south and to the east, we'll reach Route 210 and make our way to Veilstone City. Just beside this route on the overworld map, we see these two holes in the land, which perfectly line up with Lake Saroma, which is actually a lagoon, Lake Notoro, and Lake Abashiri. How fun. Now, this route goes around the mountains, of course, and also has this big crater and these three waterfalls. But conveniently, there are three famous waterfalls to the west of Lake Saroma, Rakuyono, Yamabikono, and Rokumaino Falls. Two of them are even right next to each other. The building here at the bottom is the Cafe Cabin, and it's the only place in Sinnoh you can buy Moo Moo milk. And given its location, it's probably inspired by the Watanabe Experience Farm, not only the biggest dairy farm in Hokkaido, but also famed for its tourism, hence the experience part of the name. They teach tourists how dairy farms do. And if you think IRL this is a bit too far east to be considered, conveniently, this whole part of Hokkaido is filled with dairy farms. And since this place in Pokemon is just a cafe, it may be this Yakult Dairy Cafe, which is perfectly located. Now, this pit over by Grandma Wilma's house seems very purposeful too. Hokkaido is covered in crater lakes, and this could just be a reference to all of these volcanically made craters. Or perhaps, given its location, it's based on the Omusaru pit dwellings. It's also right next to Mom Betsu Town, just like Grandmother Wilma's house right next to it. And... Also to the west, there's these three bridges right next to each other, just like these three bridges to the southwest of Mom Betsu. <laughs> yeah. And would you believe me if I said the highway around these bridges goes in the same direction of these three bridges along the route? Well, anyway, we continue through the foresty Route 250. There's a mountain to the south, which lines up well with Mount Io. Oh god, four bridges! Well, this route connects Celestic to Veilstone, so Kitami to Abashiri. Let's count how many bridges are around the highway that connects these two cities. One, two, three, four, and then the city. 
Neat. We reach Veilstone City, hewn from rock. It's said that it too was made by carving out steep rocky mountains. Fitting of the fighting type gym then, super effective on rocks, it's based on Abashiri, a major port town. Hence why Veilstone has all these warehouses, even Team Galactic's warehouse. Which may be especially fitting as Abashiri is home to one of Japan's few maximum security prisons. The name Veilstone relates to its location, carved from rocks, stone, and it's hidden away from the rest of Sinnoh by the mountains. Similar to Abashiri being surrounded by mountains, it's difficult to reach. To the south of Veilstone, there's Route 214. I wonder if these three mountain juddings refer to the three mountains that are between Abashiri and the two lakes we're about to get to. Hmm. Or maybe it's just the three mountains around said lakes. Well, off to the side here, there's a secret hidden lake named Sendoff Spring. It's sort of connected to another plane of existence, you know, the distortion world. It's likely based on Lake Mashu, another crater lake that itself is famous for being hidden. Not only is it difficult to reach, but in the summer months, it's almost completely covered by thick fog. And it was originally named the Lake of the Devil by the Ainu. Which, of course, points more to the theory that Giratina of the Distortion World is the Pokemon Satan the Devil equivalent. Also fun fact, this lake is called one of the clearest lakes in the world, which also is kind of hiding it, I guess, in a way. And another thing that makes Lake Mashu more hidden is that it's right next to another, much more prominent Caldera Lake, Kusharo, which also also has an island in the middle, and similarly, Sendoff Spring is just beside Lake Valor, home to Azelf, the willpower Pokémon. Though Lake Valor could also be inspired by Lake Akan, yet another Caldera Lake just to the southwest of these twin lakes. The connection here being that in the anime, Lake Valor is a major tourist destination with grand hotels and famous restaurants, which are also on Lake Akan's shores. Lake Akan Ainu Kotan is a resort slash spa village that's a center for traditional Ainu culture, featuring many shops, museums, and footbaths. In Sinnoh, Route 213 has an extension of this sort of resort town, and it's home to Dr. Footstep, so there's that. And west of here is the Great Marsh, which appropriately is just based on all of the marshland found in southeast Hokkaido. A train being here is interesting though, but it points us right to Kushiro Marsh, a national park that has the largest wetland in Japan, and it sports a scenic train ride right through it for tourists. And just next to the Great Marsh is Pastoria City. The Marsh City, whose name is just pasture with IA at the end like a Tales of game. Being nestled between the ocean and a wetland makes it being home to the water type gym perfect. It's based on Kushiro City, the largest city in eastern Hokkaido, though it's still only mid-sized. But it too is between the ocean and the Kushiro Marsh. Now, Pastoria City has a Krogunk temple in the anime, which too is fitting. The swamps around Kushiro City are where one would find the Hokkaido frog. West to Route 212, there's more swampland, and yet another major river, most likely based on Tokachi River, a major river that similarly goes between the last and next towns. After the river, there's some more wetland and then three ponds. I wonder how many real lakes are on this side of the river. Ah, well five technically, Lake Yudonuma being the big one. Actually, I wonder if the intent here is if this is a river or if it's a lake. It has the right square shape right here that Lake Yudonuma also has. Perhaps then this water continuing up is the Yudo River, which feeds the lake. But also, looking at Sinnoh's overworld map, the south of Sinnoh gets cut off. So if we arbitrarily decide that the southern border of Sinnoh when compared to Hokkaido is right here, then BAM! Three lakes! <laughs> or if you think these are too coastal to be considered what these ponds are referencing a bit further south, there are many mouths to many major rivers right along this coastline, all kinda next to each other. Beside this is Mr. Backlot's mansion, a rich guy who won't shut up about how much he loves his backyard garden and how much Pokemon love his garden and how you should be super jealous of his yard and his garden. And wouldn't you know it, that means garden or courtyard in Japanese. Continuing north, we reach Hearth Home City, in the middle of Sinnoh. Warm and kind is its motto, and its name is just home and hearth combined. Creative. Well, Hearthome is said to be a very child-friendly city, and as such, there are many families with young children. How fitting then that the gym leader here is ghost type. There's an ample supply of young souls. 
Being so family-centric makes this the perfect city for the Super Contest Hall, home of Pokemon contests, where Pokemon are judged on their looks and talent rather than strength. There's also Amity Square, a fun park where cute Pokemon abound and have fun. There's also the Pokemon Fan Club, the Poffin House, a Pokemon Hotel, and a foreign culture building. Curious. Well, this city is based on Obihiro, a mid-sized city that is also home to Japan's World Rally Championship event, as well as Bon A Horse Competitions, and the Obihiro Zoo, and many, many parks with fountains and arenas and gymnasiums and events, all of which could contribute to Hearth Home's Super Contest Hall in Amity Square. The quote-unquote foreign culture building is clearly a cathedral of sorts and fits well here, as Obihiro is where the Japan International Cooperation Agency and the JICA Obihiro International Center are located, and they are intended to facilitate international studies and events. Two of their most popular are the World Cookout and the Mori no Halloween Party for children. So hey, again, kid-friendly and ghosts. In Pokemon, though, this building is clearly designed to look like a Christian church of sorts, likely because Hokkaido has more of them per capita than the other Japanese prefectures. Its proximity to Russia is to blame for that. The whole reason Japan decided to finally take over and assimilate Hokkaido was because Russia was getting kinda handsy with it and other islands just to the north of it. The Russian Orthodox Church was doing their best to convert the locals and built a few cathedrals around Hokkaido, and Japan didn't want that. Now, the path west, which goes again to Mount Coronet, though this time the southeast side, is Route 208. Clearly very mountainous, and there's a river or lake here surrounded by mountain on all sides, making it either Lake Shikaribetsu or Lake Nukabira. Both lakes properly located and both completely surrounded by mountain. But now, does one of them have a waterfall? Oh, you betcha. Tenguno Falls, just a bit up the river from Nukabira. Though, this lake has no island in the middle. But the other one does. Benten Island. It's even got a little shrine on it. So this part of Route 208 may be combining the two mountain lakes. Now to the other side, the path to the northeast, Route 209, has the Lost Pokemon Tower, a resting ground for deceased Pokemon, as well as the Hollowed Tower, a crumbled tower or gravestone where one can find Spiritomb. And there are, of course, many cemeteries between Obihiro and Oshoro, the town that Selassion is based on, which we'll get to soon, but obelisk-like towers as memorials are found all over Hokkaido, such as the Hokkaido Centennial Memorial Tower, honoring fallen ancestors, the Wakanai Inori no To Tower, honoring the victims of an aircraft shooting incident that shook the world, a memorial to William S. Clark, an American who helped modernize Japan in the 1800s, and many, many more across the island. So really, you could put this tower anywhere, but also between Obihiro and Oshoro, there are a few interconnected rivers, Tokachi, Toshibetsu, and Otofuke. And the Biribetsu River connects some of them just before Oshoro. And that's not counting the over a dozen smaller rivers that feed into all of them. This area is very river heavy, hence this mess of water and bridges on the route. Though the craters here are tricky, it could just be a reference to how the highways that are here go right through valleys and gorges. Maybe it's just more yet to be filled craters from volcanic activity. Not confident in this one. So yeah, on to Selassion Town, filled with ranchers, cowgirls, and the Pokemon daycare, which I guess is basically a ranch where breeding occurs. It's based on Ashoro, a small farm town that's all about its farming, both of crops and dairy cows. Its name just combines solace and eon. The town's motto is free of worry, after all. They are very comfortable, which is what solace means. On its eastern side, you'll find the Selassion ruins, with its many unknown inscriptions. Perhaps a reference to the many prehistoric engravings found in caves all over Hokkaido, such as Fugope Cave. To this day, nobody knows what they mean, or if they even are a proto-Ainu script. Their meanings are unknown. Now that we've circled Mount Coronet, let's talk about it. It's the midpoint of Sinnoh. Atop it sits Spear Pillar, said to be the first part of the world that was created. It is the apex of all the mountain ranges across the region, which is similar to Asahidake, the tallest mountain in Hokkaido which lies in the center of the island as a point in the Ezo mountain chain, and the Daisetsuzan Volcanic Group. Its native name in Ainu is Kamui Mintara, or Playground of the Gods. 
which makes it perfect as the point where you meet the creation trio, the gods of the Pokemon world. And it's an active volcano too, with hot springs, hence all the water in Mount Coronet's caves. But speaking of caves, this is probably why the underground is such a big part of Sinnoh. While Hokkaido doesn't have an underground cave system literally everywhere underground, it does have a lot due to how tectonically active the island is. Also, the Saikan Tunnel, which connects Honshu and Hokkaido, is the longest undersea tunnel in the world, which may have caused some inspiration for this whole underground gimmick. But back up, as in really up, Spear Pillar is the top of Mount Coronet. It has no direct analog in Hokkaido, though. There's nothing really on top of Asahidake other than some signs that just say, hey, good job, you hiked all the way to the top, please don't step in the boiling water. And I mean, Spear Pillar, these are Greek-style pillars on top of this Japanese mountain? I suppose this could be a reference to Mount Olympus, a Greek mountain that is said to lead to where the gods live. But it is also worth mentioning that in Shinto legend, Izanami and Izanagi worked together to create the world, doing so by using their spear and erecting a heavenly pillar. <laughs> now then, all the way to the east, we get to Sunny Shore City, which has quite the sunny shoreline. Hence the name, get it? But before then, Route 222 might be worth bringing up. It's got an inward curved beach, of which which there are many here, but it also is home to the Pikachu fan club. It being here could, emphasis on could, be a reference to Swan 44 Nemuro, which is located in the same spot that the Pikachu fan club is. It's a famous rest area, Japan's most eastern rest area even, and it's got a swan museum and a large swan observation deck, a swan gift shop, swan photo area. It's basically a swan fan club on the highway just before reaching Nemuro City, which is sunny shore which features suspended roads made of solar panels that power the city. Fitting then that the electric type gym leader is here. Also, no, <laughs> there's no hovering solar panel roads in Hokkaido, sorry to burst your bubble there, but based on its location, it's Nemuro City, which does have a decently sizable solar power plant that powers most of the city. It's a small fishing town whose main landmarks are the Aurora Tower, as well as the Nosapu Misaki Lighthouse, right on the end of Cape Nosapu, Japan's easternmost point. The Pokemon equivalent of these is the Vista Lighthouse right here. And just above it is Pokemon Rock, which is a rock that looks like a Munchlax, possibly a reference to Nemuro's Kurumaishi, a famous wheel-shaped rock, Nemuro's iconic tourist destination. It's so cool, I guess. Look, it's in an anime. So now, with eight gym badges in hand, you travel north to Victory Road, which based on its location and caves is based on Kunashir Island, the southernmost of the Curl Islands. I mean, look, it's shaped just like it. And fun fact, since World War II, both Japan and Russia claim this island as theirs, though currently Russia controls it. And perhaps that's why the Pokemon League building here resembles another Orthodox Cathedral. Then, way further up north across a very long, very narrow, and very flowery land bridge, possibly representing the string of islands that the Coral Islands are, there's a shaman at Flower Paradise at the very north of it, which is probably probably Atlasov or Ariado Island, the northernmost island of the Coral Islands. And yes, it too is claimed by both Russia and Japan, hence its two names. A bonus fact, both the Ainu, those indigenous to Hokkaido, and the Itelmans, those indigenous to eastern Russia, have a story about this island. In short, it was such a beautiful volcano that the other mountains got jealous and banished it to the ocean. Hence also, Coral Lake let another crater, Caldera Lake, just to the north of it on the mainland. It's where the volcano volcano used to be, you see. This island truly is beautiful though, and this may be why in Pokemon it's so flowery to better get across its beauty. And lastly, there is of course the Battle Zone, which is on a totally separate landmass from Sinnoh. This is based on the southern tip of Sakhalin. See? Look at that. They just drug it way down. This is, once again, a Russian island that Japan used to claim as belonging to it, and before that it was China's. But since World War II though, they just let Russia have it. <laughs> uh, battle zone for sure then. The battle zone has four areas. The fight area, survival area, resort area, and Stark Mountain, which are based on, uh, web, the webby higgin ho topa han I can't. Google transliterate this! They are based on Shibanio, Tarane, Novikovo, and Pichchekova. 
respectively. They are all small villages. Well, except for the mountain, that's a mountain. But each of these three villages have under a thousand people each. Hardly the cities that the anime shows them being. And really, those are just the villages that sorta line up with the locations of the Pokemon areas. Not much is really taken from them, though one aspect is fitting, the resort area. Why are there these tropical seeming trees? There's a pool? Isn't this Russia? And further north than Snow Point City? Well, yes, but you see, this whole part of the world is very volcanically active, hence Stark Mountain having visible lava inside of it, and hence the legendary giant plants of Sakhalin. You see, frequent tectonic activity along southern Sakhalin leads to the environment here being much, much warmer than you'd think, though it does still freeze over winter. But like, the soil here is very dark, moist, and nutritious, just like the dirt we see on Route 227 here. And this leads to the plants in some valleys here growing huge. According to Russian researchers, these buckwheat plants, when taken elsewhere, don't grow nearly as big, meaning it has everything to do with the environment rather than the plants themselves. And this, plus its warmer temperatures, makes this a somewhat popular tourist destination. Perfect for a resort and battle frontier, huh? So, how was that for a brief dive into the origins of Sinnoh? I, of course, glossed over some things, but what are your thoughts? Is it super cool that Game Freak is so inspired by the real world that they incorporate it so heavily into their fantasy world? Or is this proof that they can't come up with any original ideas? Also, should I do more regions like this? Let me know down below. And until next time, never stop using your noggin.